Hi everyone, Wonia Tebow here, traveling through the Southwest after the Winter Camp Gathering. And I wanted to invite you all to join me and friends on a lovely little walk, a little naturalist explorer of the Santa Catalina Mountains in Catalina State Park. I'm gonna introduce you to some lovely desert plants and ecosystems. There were ground squirrels running around the parking lot as we were leaving and a place where a dog had shed some fur which I spun into a little piece of yarn and tied around my wrist. So that is the bracelet you can see on my wrist throughout the hike. The Santa Catalina Mountains were formed over the series of 30 plus million years. First through plate tectonics pushing up the mountain ranges and then through volcanic extrusions up through that making these big domed granite formations here and then those mountains slowly eroded and formed big alluvial fans like this huge boulders sand and gravel building up and then over time the rivers carved through these alluvial fans creating the deeper canyons like the one we're hiking up right now. Here we have some beautiful lupin blooming and coming up a crested saguaro that's a very unusual growth form for this already unusual cactus formation and California poppies blooming in Arizona as they do. And wait for it, wait for it. There it is, the song of the beautiful canyon wren, one of my favorite sounds anywhere. This is the lovely wildflower Facilia, beautiful spring flower and a bird's nest from last season, but still clinging to a Palo Verde. And just the beautiful skyscrape of Push Ridge and the Santa Catalinas. This little lovely here, which is super common to find in riparian areas, so areas along streams or seeps or natural waterways, is mugwort. And it has a wonderful scent and if you bruise it a little bit just wonderful it's in the same genus as um, wormwood which is used to make absinthe and desert sagebrush and the herb tarragon so a really common genus called artemisia named after the goddess artemis who's awesome which makes perfect sense and it's very good for headaches sniffling it or putting it in teas it's going to be very bitter but it's going to be good for digestive upset in tea and good for headaches either by sniffing it or um, taking the tea and it's also good for bringing very intense dreams which can be lovely if that's what you're after and might make your sleep a little bit less attainable um, or at least less deep if you have a little too much so mugwort fabulous plant friend to know about Sotal, also known as desert spoon. Sotal is a plant that has both males and females, and these are two beautiful flowering female sotal. Actually, past flowering, they're in the seed stage. Even here in the sear Sonoran Desert, under the tree canopy is this lush, wonderful, delicious, succulent green miner's lettuce. These are the first leaves that come out. After this, it'll have a big round leaf with the stalk growing right through it. Delicious seasonal treat. Oh, here's one of the big ones. As it gets older, they will all look more like this. Ooh. But the first leaves are like that. Alex? Sure. Thank you. And right here is another friend, not native, but this is cleavers or bed straw, and this is a good medicinal, and it also stays where you put it. So it's a lot of fun to uh, go hiking with your friends, and by the time they get back, they're <laughs> covered with cleavers. Always a good time. Cleaver. That makes sense. Yeah, cleavers. Um, also bed straw because they used to stuff mattresses with it Ooh. in the in pioneer and homestead era. And this is in the coffee family. 
Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And the seeds, when they come up, are slightly stimulating. Go figure. Uh -huh. Caffeine still. Right. Yep. Very good. <laughs> This is actually the egg case of a praying mantis and the skeleton of a saguaro that has died and the beautiful Indian paintbrush, one of my favorite flowers. This little beauty here is wild mustard, a delicious peppery bite to it. And this is a really wonderful family to know because there are no poisonous plants in the mustard family. So in a pinch, really good one to know. And you want to make sure that you're really familiar with it. You don't want to make assumptions. But one good characteristic is it has four petals. A lot of them have yellow flowers, not all of them. And then also it tends to have seed pods that look almost like beans, except they're pointing up. So long pods are characteristic of the mustard family. Fabulous little tree. And on the other side of this beautiful stately oak is another fabulous, delicious edible. So here again is miner's lettuce, and right now it's actually flowering. So you can see the beautiful little five-petaled flowers of miner's lettuce, which is in the Claytonia genus. And growing right next to it is this bad boy in the thistle family. And these are a really good source of moisture in the desert. So you can whack off a leaf, and holding it carefully, take off all of the spiky bits. And then you're going to have this succulent stalk that tastes a little bit like artichoke, but it's got a lot of moisture in it. So again, if you're out hiking somewhere and you're running out of water and you don't know if you can trust the water where you are or there isn't any, really nice to be able to prepare a nice thistle stalk. Can you hear that crunch? It's all cells that are packed with moisture so very good to know about delicious good for you and we'll wet your thirst another great desert plant to know about is jojoba now this like the sotal has a male and a female plant we're looking at the male right here the close-up of its flowers that bear pollen but not fruit versus the female here that makes a nut and the nut is big and fatty and tastes really good but technically the fat is not very digestible so it's a survival food not a staple food but beautiful plant to know this lovely tree shrub here is hackberry there are two types of hackberries in the sonoran desert that i'm familiar with and both of them have lovely little fruits. One is a little juicier than the other. You can see the lovely little fruit here. So it's a very thin layer of a sweet fruit around a hard shell, but still fruit is fruit and it's good to know your fruits in the desert. So hackberry, it's a good one. So here is the other hackberry. This is the net leafed hackberry. And what we saw earlier was the canyon hackberry. This one grows in tree form. The other one doesn't get much bigger than shrub. And this is the one with the drier fruit. So it's, it dries down and it's just a sweet layer around a big hard seed, whereas the other has a little bit more moisture and flesh to it. But both lovely desert plants to know. So right above me up here <laughs> is Sheep Mountain, named for the desert bighorn, which actually were gone from the Santa Catalinas due to hunting and development and were reintroduced into this mountain range. So this is named for this iconic desert species that unfortunately people did not manage well. So may we do a little bit better by the desert bighorn this time around. Thank you so much for watching my videos. It's been really lovely bringing you along on my teaching and exploring trip in the Southwest. If you love what I'm doing and you wanna participate in helping me do more of it and give suggestions and feel like you're part of the team, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It makes a huge difference in what I'm able to do and really makes all of this possible. 
And huge thanks to Hollis and Phil, with whom I did this lovely hike, and who did most of the filming, and who were very good-natured about me having a camera pointed at everything for a lot of our lovely day. Thanks, guys.